They called Middlesbrough against Leeds a Yorkshire derby, but today's second division battle has far wider significance. In fact, the whole of the North East will be watching because this result could give a major boost to both Newcastle and Sunderland's promotion drive. Middlesbrough are trying desperately hard to catch up with their great neighbours and rivals who are both tucked in behind the Barra's opponents today. Bruce Rieck's team started their campaign to return to Division 1 in really disappointing style. But there's a feeling now that the old rhythm is returning, even though they lost at Wolves last week. Gary Parkinson returns to the defence in place of the suspended Nicky Moen, and Trevor Putney is fit again in midfield, so Mark Brennan is on the bench. Leeds manager Howard Wilkinson springs a major surprise. His two principal strikers, Ian Baird and Bobby Davison, are both injured, so John Pearson and Carl Shutt will spearhead the attack. But one of Leeds' most expensive signings, Mel Sterland, has recovered from the bruised ribs he collected in the one-goal win against Newcastle. Noel Blake stays in the back four, even though the former United defender Peter Haddock is back after a calf injury, which kept him out of the game against his old club. It's by far and away the most expensive lineup in the division, brimful of experience. Today's referee, David Scott from Burnley. So it's second place Leeds United who get us underway. 20 points the difference between these two teams. Middlesbrough down in 18th position. But Leeds, of course, with a reshuffled attack today. And it's been their forward Ellen Road, which has really been the foundation for their promotion drive. Eight wins in a row on their own territory. But away from Elland Road, it has been a somewhat different story. They've won three and drawn three out of nine. And in fact, Ayrson Park here has been something of a graveyard. They've not won on Teesside in the last 12 visits, and he'd have to go back to 1975 when Leeds win the European Cup final when they last got a victory here. And certainly Middlesbrough will need to pull out another excellent performance this afternoon if they are indeed to keep their movement up the table going. Harry Parkinson, it is here, who's got a long throw and hurls it in towards Ripley. And that's a corner kick to Middlesbrough right in the uh, opening seconds. Mark Proctor used to be with Leeds manager Howard Wilkinson when he was in charge at Sheffield Wednesday. And now providing the experience in Middlesbrough's midfield. And the pressure is still on Leeds. Another corner kick conceded. Proctor again to take it. And Mowbray, the number four, was looking for it. Ripley got a flick on. Slaven hoped it would come through, but it wouldn't shut. Could only find Ripley. And it's the third corner. Strong start this by Middlesbrough. He's only won four out of nine at home in the league. And when they beat Oxford by a single goal a fortnight ago, it was their first home win in six. Ripley not quite getting the knock on then. Touch there, Putney. Mowbray still up there, Slaven, the whistle had gone. There had been a suspicion of hands when the ball came in, but the danger there clear for Leeds United, Bernie Slaven. The Borough's leading scorer by a street. A good ball played in by Proctor again. Mowbray was up there, and you can see the appeal for hands there, Fairclough turning. Pearson, Batty, looking for Shutt through the middle, Parkinson had seen it, but Shutt's still carrying on, and Shutt scores! He carried on all the way and got his reward. Nine minutes gone, and Middlesbrough had their warnings earlier about hesitation in the defence. It was clipped through... There were defenders there, Parkinson must have thought he had it under control, but Shutt never gave up. And that's 1-0 to Leeds. So Carl Shutt comes in and gets his reward with the goal. Ten minutes gone now, Middlesbrough 0, Leeds United 1. will be delighted with that one but Middlesbrough surely will be asking questions along that back four they threw a couple of awful goals away down at Ellen Road in August and uh, certainly intent on going along a similar route this afternoon it seems offside called there 
And Carl shut, proving once again that he should never give up and there's no such thing as a lost cause to chase. And he gets his first goal of the season. It was Patty who chipped it through. Mowbray left it for Parkinson. And Shuck just got the foot and Paul couldn't keep it away. Davenport will rob by Fairclough. Coleman now. Can he go all the way? Coleman upended by Blake. And Jones tests the innocence of his colleague. Coleman looks behind him ruefully. And referee David Scott will certainly decide that is looking for Blake. Up. They got the curl on it all right, but just a foot or so above Mervyn Dave's crossbar. The referee holding up play now because there seem to be problems here in the corner at Ayrson Park. And some people are obviously hurt there. And one mum there with her two kids. Another fan away on a stretcher. Yeah, it seems to mainly have been young children who've been affected there with mums and dads come up for the trip. A lot of them being uh, led away there. The impression we get, and I must emphasize it, it is only an impression. No official statements have been issued, obviously, so far. Is that some of the youngsters at the front of that enclosure were crushed against the front fences as fans from the back tried to push forward and get a better view. Sterling. Sterling on the run, that's a good turn from Shutt. Strachan's in the middle, but Coleman had closed him down all the way. Very straight faces there on the Middlesbrough bench. It really has been quite an unhappy afternoon for the Borough so far on and sadly off the pitch. Looks in again. And again off the line, but it's gone in and it's fair clough. And that's 2 0 to Leeds. Middlesbrough had the men on the line, but they couldn't do anything about it this time. The corner knocked in by Strachan. The height was crucial. Middlesbrough couldn't get it away. It was a terrific leap by Fairclough. And Ripley on the line couldn't keep it out. 2-0 now to Leeds. And all sorts of problems for the Borough. This rear with more than a share of problems and it really has got to say something fairly special during the half-time interval if he's going to inspire his Middlesbrough team now Slaven he's a man who can do something Davenport couldn't find him then but he's got a second chance Davenport trying to get away from Batty good covering by the England B midfield player 21 last Saturday and a man with a lot of future. Proctor, though, with this corner kick. Knocked in towards the near post. Borough can't make something of it. Inventive work there by Kernahan. Proctor again can cross. Not a bad effort. Slaven wanted to get there. Blake was first. Williams. And there goes the half-time whistle. A long first half, of course, marred by those problems in the crowd. But it sees Leeds United two goals ahead. With an injury there right at the end of the first 45 minutes. Carl Schutt setting Leeds on their way after 10 minutes. And then towards the end of that half, Chris Fairclough making it Middlesbrough nil, Leeds 2 at half-time. Welcome back to Ayrson Park for the second half. It's Middlesbrough nil, Leeds United two.
Carl Schott and Chris Fairclough. Remember the two goal scorers in what has been a very, very eventful afternoon with the problems among the Leeds fans who have in fact now been repositioned over the far right-hand corner of the ground. But it's Middlesbrough who've got the free kick right at the start of this second half and they really do need to get an early goal to get back at Leeds. We've only won three times away from home, remember, and each time by a one-nil margin. And Cooper may well try one. And he's certainly got the power, but gone underneath it, rather, and it was always on the up. Middlesbrough, who may well have the work cut out beating Mervyn Day. They've only got three goals in the last five league games. Cooper it was from this free kick who was trying to increase Burrow's recent goal tally. Teed up, winding up for the big one, but far too high. A good knockout there for Davenport. Tries to take on Sterling, which is a fair job in itself, but he's not doing it badly. He did well to get the cross in. And Slaven! And Slaven, I suspect, will be disappointed at that one. Certainly by his high standards, he applauds the work done by Davenport in providing the opportunity. He wriggled away from Sterland impressively. Excellent cross, Slaven there. But he got his angles wrong on that occasion. And that by Bernie Slaven's high standards was a definite chance. building up now by Middlesbrough if they can play the ball in and Slaven looks as though he could and through the middle there is Putney and Day did remarkably well to keep that one out it was a good dangerous move by Middlesbrough from beginning to end and Putney had read it all correctly Slaven chips the ball in an excellent knockback there for Putney who got it on target but Day grabbed it at second and third attempts Coming on, Alan Kernahan it is who's going off. And to be replaced by Mark Brennan. Leeds who've gone 15 games unbeaten until they lost at Leicester in early November. And it's only been their away form that spoiled them getting another record like that. And Ripley now for Middlesbrough trying to get his team back in the game. That was excellent work by Putney. And finally there by Parkinson. And it was an awkward moment there for Mervyn Day. Harry Parkinson moving forward with some purpose and unleashing a good drive here. Had some swerve on it. And Day didn't quite collect it as cleanly as he might have liked. Leeds were nil, Leeds United two, and well in control. Ripley was waiting in the middle, Dave got it and decided 
attempt to kick it out without gathering it too cleanly, but he certainly did more than enough to keep Middlesbrough at bay there. Middlesbrough still pressing forward diligently. Proctor, that's a good ball for Slaven. Coleman has stayed there in the middle, Ripley arriving too. Here goes Slaven. And just going away from Mervyn Day's left-hand post. But Slaven once again showing how quickly he can get his shots in. One of the few occasions he's had any room to run at the defence, he sidestepped his man neatly, sized up the opportunity, and it was just drifting away. But still Leeds come forward through Vinnie Jones, and Williams has skipped around Parkinson, but still has to beat his man to get the cross in. And he does now. And it's no goal offside given for ever shot had it in the back of the net and then he got a fall to smile with one goal already to his credit that's sort of build up though Jones jumping and the foul on Proctor Everyone from Middlesbrough has pushed forward, barring Kevin Poole, of course, and Parkinson, who will take this free kick in stoppage time. And there goes the final whistle, and Leeds take another positive step towards the first division. A much-needed away win for Howard Wilkinson's team. A disappointing afternoon, though, for Middlesbrough. They'll be saddened at those problems with Leeds supporters being crushed it seemed a little midway through the first half but after Carl Schuck gave Leeds the lead after 10 minutes through some defensive hesitation it was downhill all the way for the borough Chris Fairclough made it 2-0 just before half time and they take the applause of the road on the big screen will be more than pleased with the afternoon's work by the Leeds United team the final score here at Ayrson Park it's Middlesbrough nil, Leeds United two. So a disappointing afternoon for Middlesbrough. The manager, Bruce Riot, could only say, if you don't take your chances, you won't win many matches. Sadly, the major talking point of the afternoon were those off-the-field problems. The club's only official comment, the Leeds enclosure was slightly under capacity. They will have an inquiry here at Ayrson Park, but Chief Executive Keith Lamb said the club was still satisfied with having the perimeter fencing.